hello guys and welcome back to the channel so now guys it would have been funny if it was not so tragic the mess that we're in as a nation uh, called nigeria this mess that we are in is almost certain to set us back by one generation if we're lucky but almost certainly by two generations now because the damage that these people will do over the uh, eight year course that they're going to be in position is going to be very difficult to reverse guys i bring you this federal government threatens cnn again investigate your report on lucky toll gate or face legal action so this is now the ridiculousness now that we are now in as a nation uh, called nigeria the laughing stock of the entirety of the human uh, globe for of the entire world we're just like a joke to everybody now given of course the circumstances that we find ourselves in uh the lucky toll gate of course all of the uh, evidence is out in our uh, cyberspace even dj swift was uh, live streaming uh the incident on the day as the event was happening to in excess of 400,000 people CNN reporters were there images were captured in video recording and in a photograph to show what transpired there and it's almost unequivocal what happened there but alas this is where we find ourselves federal government threatens CNN again investigate your report on Lekki Gate or face legal action so now let's now see what now the basement uh Lai Mohammed is reducing us to this time around. The federal government has threatened to take legal action against the United States based cable news network CNN if it does not do an exhaustive investigation into its report on Lekki Gate shooting by the Nigerian military recall that a few days ago cnn did a report titled how a bloody night of bullets quashed a young protest movement on the shooting of hashtag NSAS protesters by the nigerian military at lake Ito gate in the report cnn showed how the nigerian military shot killed and injured some protesters in lagos following the report the federal government of nigeria through the minister of information and culture al haji lai mohammed described the report as untrue and inciting in the letter dated november the 23rd 2020 signed by alaji lai mohammed the federal government urged the cnn to investigate its report to ascertain if it meets up with the basic standards of journalism the letter which was directed to mr jonathan hawkins vice president communication cnn atlanta georgia united states faulted the media house on keeping silence over the killings of six soldiers and 37 police men during the hashtag NSAS protest the letter reads in part as a form of remediation nigeria's federal government demands an immediate and exhaustive investigation from the cnn into its investigative report on the lucky target incident to determine amongst others its authenticity whether or not it met the basic standards of journalism and also the selective use of unverified social media videos to manipulate public opinion whilst it is up to the cnn to accede or not please note that the federal government reserves the right to take any action within its laws to prevent cnn from aggravating the hashtag insights crisis with unprofessional irresponsible one-sided inciting and sensational reporting that is capable of pitching nigerians against themselves and setting the country on fire it is shocking that all through its investigation cnn did not for once mention the fact that six soldiers and 37 policemen were killed during the hashtag NSAS crisis which also left 196 policemen injured not to talk of the monumental destruction of government and private properties across the country instead the network is fixated on the massacre that never happened 
are security agents not human beings too? Are they not entitled to the protection of their human rights? The federal government, however, said this is not the first time CNN is carrying inaccurate or hoax news about Nigeria. In February 2007, Nigeria accused CNN of staging one of its reports from the country's Niger Delta region showing gunmen holding 24 Filipinos hostage. Of course, CNN and its then Africa correspondent Jeff Kinogi flatly denied the charge, saying the network did not pay for any part of the report. Later, in an email reportedly sent to a friend, Mr. Kinogi was quoted as saying, of course we had to pay certain people to get the story. You do not get such a story without bribing. So much for denial, the letter noted. Furthermore, the letter said, in the first instance, the report did not live up to the most basic of the core principles of journalism, balance and fairness. According to the website www ethic.journalist.org balance and fairness are classic buzzwords of journalism ethics in objective journalism stories must be balanced in the sense of attempting to present all sides of a story fairness means that journalists should strive for accuracy and truth in reporting and not slant a story so a reader draws the reporter's desired conclusion rushing to air such momentous stories without presenting the government side is inexcusable and indefensible cnn said it contacted over a hundred protesters and family members but did not speak to one official of the nigerian federal government while cnn said there was no response from the army and that officials of the Lagos state government would not speak in view of the judicial panel that is investigating the matter it did not say what efforts it made to speak to any official of the federal government the truth is that the cnn did not even attempt to reach the federal government nina elbiga who presented the report and most probably led the investigation is conversant with the minister of information and culture who is also the spokesperson of the federal government of nigeria yet did not say that she even tried to reach the minister it is therefore strange to say the least that she would rush to air such an important investigation report without getting the government's side in other words Neiman and by extension the cnn breached the most basic of core principles of journalism balance and fairness cnn has said that it stands by a story and that our reporting was carefully and meticulously researched this is baffling considering that the story lacks fairness and balance as we have pointed out and that the organization relied heavily on manipulated social media videos this resort to an escapist cliche seems more like a face saving measure by an otherwise respectable news network caught in the blinding glare of fake news and disinformation headlamps or how else does one explain the arrogant defense of an international news network that it would not even respect the most basic principle of journalism one of cnn's star witnesses in its investigative reporting is dj swift unknown to cnn dj switch so sorry that was switch by the way not swift i keep on calling her dj swift so i'll take it from the top again one of cnn's star eyewitness in its investigative reporting is dj swift unknown to cnn dj swift story on the lucky gate shooting has changed several times from claiming that she counted 78 bodies of protesters who were supposedly killed by soldiers on the night of the lucky gate incident she has twice at least 
changed the casualty figures from 78 to 15 and then to 7 without a shred of evidence. CNN cannot pretend not to know that for anyone to act as a witness, his or her credibility must be unimpeachable. DJ Switch's credibility does not meet that threshold. If you go back through the trajectory of this narrative, the first storyline of the army was that there was no army there, but uh, uh, it was hoodlums. But then, of course, Amnesty International did like a satellite grab and a timestamp of the army leaving their barracks in Ikoyi and uh, arriving at a Victoria Island in seventh trucks so they were not able to sustain that lie and already uh, having to lie about that completely then disqualifies everything that they say subsequently because they were there and they were denying that they were not there so that already puts you on the footing that these people are just out to lie and cover up so that attempt at lie and cover up follows all the way through so uh now they are saying that there were no bodies found on the scene but then of course uh the the people that were there, the eyewitnesses that were there, were uh, reporting that the army scattered the bodies away. And to buttress that, when the uh, Lagos State Judicial Panel that was constituted to investigate these things arrived at the army barracks to investigate their uh, uh, mortuary uh, taken along a pathologist, the army swiftly sent them away on the threat of giving them a beating. So this was what happened. So we already know that that happened. And this lie Mohammed now is now telling us that there's no video evidence of uh, 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 the army's killing people. When gunshots are being fired at uh, Ajebota students, uh, is it video evidence that they'll be gathering or running for their lives and praying as they are running that a bullet does not hit them at the back of the head so this is really the narrative when the lights were shut off you, you got just imagine dead for a moment so the average person now is some uh, young professional uh, university students and intellectuals these are the people at the forefront of that uh, hashtag uh, movement so they've gathered then at Lekki toll gate to have a sit down protest or vigil singing the national anthem and waving flags suddenly the lights were turned off and then suddenly they started to hear gunshots these are people that travel all over the world uh, because a lot of them would have been leaving that uh, uh, protest to go and have a shower and a sleep and then the next day go on holiday to Dubai, London, Germany, etc. So these are Ajabota people and suddenly the lights are turned off and they are hearing gunshots and you are telling us that they did not record the people shooting. Would they be recording the people shooting with their smartphones or running to escape with their lives because they know that their daddy will be very upset if they bring back their dead bodies. So this is what went on. Uh, suddenly the situation just flipped 100%. The light went off and they were gunshots and you are saying that people were not recording what what sense is what what instinct takes over in that sort of a situation is it not first to survive and to save your own life above everything else and then recount later if you survived what actually transpired which is exactly what we are seeing but then of course Lai Mohammed uh, has been rebranded by the Nigerian population as Lai Mohammed for reasons now that is demonstrating again so this is now the Nigerian government again debasing the Nigerian name with this uh, empty-headed buck tooth guy spitting all over the CNN, uh, uh, threatening them with Yusuf Bichi that is going to detain them in a DSS facility and give them the Shogore beating for having the temerity to ask them to stop killing the Nigerian people. Conversations in the comment section is just gets worse every time you come across this uh, situation that is called the Nigerian uh, experiment or the Nigerian entity. I don't even know the words anymore to uh, describe these things but if you have the words then come give your description in the comment section but before you come describe click on the red subscribe button so it turns gray the bell button notifies you every time i drop a new video click on like as well because that helps with the youtube algorithm so i will see you in court is what lai mohammed is saying to cnn on behalf of his papa malam buhari what says you come share thoughts so i'll leave you here carry this conversation on with you in the comment section but here i say peace